Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and today we're doing something a little different. And I'll be right here to help you. Hey, what's with the skirt, gorilla? Jeez, Jess, calm down. Becky here is just going to help us out today with our review. That's right, and I won't tolerate any sexism from this one over here. What the hell is this broad talking about, gorilla? Hubba hubba, hoochie coochie, hot tamale. Oh, would you look at the gams on that one, gorilla? Excuse me, miss, do you have any Minnesota in you? Would you like some? Ha <laughs> ha! Women are objects, gorilla. You know what I like more than objectifying women? Nothing. Did you see that, Jess? You're always getting me into trouble! How can you call me a sexist? I'm a goddamn sexual Tyrannosaurus! Well, the book stops here, Baldy! Oh, snap! Baldy, who do you think you're talking to, you painted up Irish hussy? I think the biggest conspiracy is how on earth you remained relevant for so long! All right, everybody, shut the fuck up, because today we're doing WWE girl stuff! Raz Holly, hit the music! It's almost like he's like a noodle. Yeah. In 2010, Mattel took over the license for the WWE action figures. And while some improvements have been made over Jackass Pacific, the line is basically continued, with a basic line replacing the Ruthless Aggression, and <clears throat> Elite line replacing the Deluxe Aggression. But today we're talking about the ladies. And Raz Holly already covered how horrifying the WWE women figures have become since, well, they never really have been good, have they? But this is Mattel we're talking about. The house that Barbie built. So they could possibly do something to make these figures look less hideous, right? Mattel decided it was high time that they made some WWE figures for girls specifically. Which isn't the worst idea in the world. Especially when it's Mattel, the Barbie company, implementing this idea. I'm not sure how well the line performed since I was able to pick up a few of these figures on clearance recently. Vulture. Scavenger? What the fuck? Anyway, the line consisted of a selection of 12-inch Barbie-style dolls along with a lineup of 6-inch action figures that for the first time feature female WWE superstars that don't look like hideous monstrosities. And that's what we're looking at today. Well, it's about time you got around to picking these up, boy -o. People need to know about these figures. Girls need to know about these figures. Imagine what it would be like if you were a girl! Yeah! Right on! Ha ha ha! Yeah! Well, what would you do if you were a girl? I'd kick your ass at basketball, that's what! Anyway, Let's check these figures out. All right, so the 2017 WWE Superstars um, with the female characters featuring Sasha Banks. We've got the first one here. She comes with her necklace right here. You can see it in the, uh, in the packaging. Actually makes sense because look, look folks, she's wearing one. That makes a lot of sense. Remember that for later. So on the box, you've got your basic stuff. This is actually a pretty good uh, packaging here because it features the figure and what you get and doesn't give you a bunch of bull crap and uh, extra graphics and whatnot. We can turn it around um, and you've got all your mumbo jumbo. Look at the size of the legal bullshit on the back of this box. But anyway, you've got to collect them all and uh, various stuff. And this is pretty much the same on, on each one of these boxes. You've got your superstar, in this case, Sasha Banks, and she's standing next to a little girl that's like, look at me, I got this figure, motherfucker. But it's just a stock photo of Sasha Banks. You also have a fake uh, 
autograph there as well. Next, Charlotte Flair, who inexplicably comes with a necklace. I don't remember her ever wearing a necklace that says Flair on it, but whatever. Here she is, and she's right there in the box. It's you know the same thing as the Sasha Banks. All the way down to the back here kind of shows you the other two. You got Bailey, you got Sasha. You've got no Becky Lynch. I don't know why. Um, there's four of them. And, you know, I don't know why they just didn't make four of them. Whatever. But anyway, um, you know, you got the girl and she's really proud to be holding a, Sa or, uh, I'm sorry, a Charlotte Flair figure and have the necklace. And finally, here we have Bailey, the Ultimate Fan Pack. These are all called the Ultimate Fan Pack, although this one comes with a DVD, bracelet, headband, and the figure, exclusive figure. Um, it, it's a different color than the figures you find in the single packs. Um, and these are all the fan packs, these ones that I have. And on the back, it's the same thing except larger. You have the girl that's like... Yeah, fucking right. She does not give a fuck about this stuff. They just hired this little chick to take a picture with a figure. And But anyway, <laughs> you can also see the other Sasha Banks Ultimate Fan Pack, which is not the same. It comes with a DVD and rings that say Legit Boss, like the ones that she wears in real life. At least with this one, unlike the Charlotte one, Bailey does have the little slap bracelets, the headbands, um, and the DVD's a nice touch. I haven't watched it yet. I don't know what's on it. But anyway, let's open these fuckers up and see what's inside. Okay, so right away, um, Hasbro, I've got a bone to pick. I went to go pick this figure out of, the, out of the box, and instead of just, you know, how long have you been making toys, Hasbro? Like 100, 150,000 fucking years, and you can't figure out how to put a figure in some plastic without tying them up with little goddamn twist ties and bullshit. I need extra tools to get these fucking things out of here. So, look, look, she's fucking tied up. It's like, it's like fucking kink.com trying to get this fucking figure out of the box. I might break it. Fuck you, Hasbro. Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks. Neither of them have twist ties on the packaging. But the Bailey one, I guess because they put a DVD in there, they couldn't figure out how to get it in there without her arms flopping around in the fucking package. The body was just fine, but they had to tie it in there. And I don't understand why they do these things. Because, like, what? If I'm a little kid that got this for, her, you know, her birthday or whatever, and I'm like, yay, it's Bailey. I'm going to open it up and play. And you just give it to this kid. Like, you're going to need access to a pair of scissors or something to cut this up. And, you know, the little kids, they're going to be grabbing the scissors. They're going to be like... They're going to be like, oh, shit, let me get this out of here. And they're going to be jamming it like, oh, my finger, oh, my God, oh. Like, that's what's going to happen. You know, I had to cut this thing open. I'm an adult, and it's a little fucking sketchy, you know? But, like, what? Come on, Hasbro, come on. Okay, so we finally got Sasha Banks open, and let's take a look at her real quick. These figures have the basic articulation for the WWE Elite Series, um, meaning they have the, you know, the head, the arms, the wrists. They've got a, like, a chest sort of movement. They have a waist. Uh, swivel and they have ball joint legs or yeah kind of like that they can move with the knee and they can uh, move with the ankle as well um, but whatever I mean like yes it's it's very poseable for a figure like this it's actually more poseable than their regular WWE line one small gripe I have about this figure is let's take a look here they gave her her uh, signature sunglasses um, but here you can see that the sunglasses are painted on, or a little sculpted on, but they look really shitty and fake on top of her head. So here we have Charlotte Flair, and like I said before, they, they made sure to, to make these look a little bit more feminine in the face. And here it is, and you, and you know it doesn't necessarily look like the person that it's supposed to depict. I mean, they did get her little mole, um, but 
It doesn't really look like Charlotte, but it looks good and it looks a lot better than a lot of those uh, WWE figures for some reason. What they're doing, the QA on the real scans or whatever, they just don't work out. And finally, here's Bailey, um, the hugger. It says, I'm a hugger on her shirt, and she's got sparkly pants. Um, and, you know, it looks like her ring gear, or at least at one time. And it looks kind of like Bailey, sort of. Um, the, <laughs> the faces look good. They look, they all kind of fit a certain, you know, aesthetic that they're going for on these. So I kind of understand why that is. And they do look better than the real scan ones. So we'll give them that there. Like, I would much rather have one of these figures than one of those elite figures um, that they've been... You know, trying to uh, push on us ever since Mattel took over the license. Not that Jack Specific was any better. Okay, let's take a look at the accessories. You've got this headband that comes with Bailey. You've got the uh, wristband that comes with Bailey. It's supposed to look like one of those little slap bracelets because she hands those out, um, or used to back in the day, or at least when they were making these things. That that was one of her sort of trademark things, and it looks like a slap bracelet. I mean, how much fucking more expensive could it have been to give me an actual slap bracelet that says Bailey on it? Are those things, they used to sell those things for 25 cents in the little fucking machines, but no, instead we get this in, like, I can't fit it on me. I mean, what if I wanted to wear it? You know, what if there's like, you know, a 300 pound little girl that wants to fucking wear this thing? She ain't gonna get it on her fat little wrist, I'll tell you that. All right, next up, we've got Sasha Banks, legit boss, uh, gold, <laughs> fucking uh, necklace, not really gold. They couldn't even, you know, um, go for the chrome <laughs> to make it at least look metallic. It just looks yellow, it's like cheese. So we've got the, uh, the legit boss cheese necklace, which um, quality wise is about what you would expect from a party favor, um, something like that. Like, or something that you might get out of a, uh, you know, one of those 25 cent uh, little redemption machines. But yeah, that is a, uh, that's a piece of shit. And then the inexplicable Charlotte Flair <sighs> necklace that, like, I, she doesn't wear a necklace, but here, here it is. And it's got fake diamonds and, um, and a chain, and it doesn't look like it's made of metal or anything, and it's all hollow on the back. Those are crap, and they added so much, so much money to the price of these figures because the figures by themselves aren't that expensive, but when you add in a necklace, you get an ultimate fan pack, and I, for some reason, the, the price goes way up for giving you a party favor. These are kind of a rip, honestly. Um, and finally, you've got the Bailey. DVD. I have not checked it out, but it's got some matches on it. It's, uh, you know, approximately 68 minutes is what it says on the, wait a minute, on the fucking box. Hold on. on the box, approximate running time was 97 minutes color. No shit, but come on. 68 minutes once we open this up. So we've got some, uh, you know, I mean, I guess 68 and 97 are approximately close. Uh, <laughs> like, I guess, relatively, it's all close. And you got three matches on here. You got Bailey versus Sasha Banks, Bailey and Sasha Banks versus Charlotte and Dana Brooke, and Bailey versus Nia Jax from Takeover London. Um, okay. Um, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, the Takeover Brooklyn match is probably one of the best ones. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you know what, this one actually adds the most value to one of these things. You get a few matches on it, but then if you have the WWE Network, you can see all that shit anytime you want. Again, I'm not exactly sure how well these sold, but I guess we'll all find out next year if the line continues. But regardless, I think it was a pretty smart move by Hasbro, essentially taking elements from the wildly successful Barbie line and applying them to the WWE female lineup. 
Although the execution could have been a bit more in tune with what young WWE female fans are looking for instead of just slapping WWE on Barbie. Well, that's it for this week. Thank God. Ah, oh, come on, Jess. Was it really that bad reviewing some girl stuff? Well, I guess not, Gorilla. Well, good, because next week we're reviewing Supergirl. What the fuck? Shut up, Jess. Raz Holly, hit the music. Shut up, dude.